Hi, I'm Jim Melton. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to talk about the Mars Society Ambassador Program. Let me set the scene just a little bit. Elon Musk put it this way. He said, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. You want to think that the future is going to be better than today, that it's going to be a bright day. Otherwise, it's not. He said, if we operate with extreme urgency, then we have a chance of making life multiplanetary. Still just a chance, not for sure. If we don't operate with extreme urgency, the chance is probably zero. If the future does not include being out there among the stars and being a multi-planet species, then he said, I find that very depressing. You could either watch it happen or be part of it. So, enter the Mars Society Ambassador. Back in January 2020, last year, I was uh, giving a program in Denver, Colorado for 250 women. They were a very interesting group. The topic was, why Mars, why now? Then after the talk, Dana, my wife, and I went to Lakewood, Colorado to visit Dr. Zubrin. He was in the middle of uh, four NASA science projects, but we took about an hour together and we talked about how we can get the word out, how we can spread the word about the spacefaring civilization and the space adventures that are going on in our world today. And then in February, I think it was the 13th, he went down to Boca Chica, Texas and met with Elon Musk. So they put their heads together and came up with the phrase, spread the word on the unlimited Future, opened by making humanity spacefaring. Because as we've been talking about, many people are not aware of the phenomenal real-world missions currently underway to the Moon, Mars, and other solar system destinations. So I'm going to ask you, how would you like to be the one who connects with the general public to lift their awareness and open doors to reveal the plans for a spacefaring civilization. I can read your minds because as strange as it may sound to so many of you who have been on this path for so long, there is a world of eager listeners out there waiting to be enlightened. And many of the people don't even know that the greater part of their future lies in space. Yeah, we need to get the word out. And as a Mars Society ambassador, you have the ability to step forward and be an agent for change. The people I'm going to quote in just a moment are profound, but they may be sending out the wrong message. An example, Stephen Hawking. We must continue to go into space for the future of humanity. I don't think we will survive another 100 years without escaping beyond our fragile planet. And Arthur C. Clarke puts it this way, the challenge of the great spaces between our worlds is a stupendous one. But if we fail to meet it, the story of our race will be drawing to a close. Elon Musk, humans will become extinct if we do not reach beyond Earth. And Jeff Bezos, a little more positive here. We need to leave Earth to survive. We will have to leave this planet. We're going to leave and it's going to make this planet better. We're going to come and go and the people who want to stay will stay. And finally, in the words of Klaatu, from that classic 1951 movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Join us and live in peace, or continue on your present course and face obliteration. The choice is yours. As accurate as those statements are, you have to admit they do evoke some fear. So how we communicate is extremely important. 
Do you speak positively or negatively? Do you have a positive attitude or a negative attitude? I had a guy walk up to me in one of my seminars. He said, I've got a positive attitude. Jim, I just have lousy results. But that's not the case because a positive attitude produces positive results and a negative attitude produces negative results. And the two don't plug into each other. What kind of an impression do you make when you bring up the subject of Mars or humans to Mars? Or even more of an eye-opener, humans on Mars. We need to drive the point home more clearly that we are not going to Mars simply to leave Earth. We are going for humanity and discovery. I love the word discovery. It means take off the cover to see what's always been there, hidden in plain sight. And you still have people asking, why are we spending all of this money going to the moon and Mars when we have so many problems right here on Earth? How do you answer them? Spin-off technology is one very good reason. Spin-off technology will, can, and does apply directly to life here on Earth. A lot of people don't realize that. As it says in one of the founding declarations in the Mars Society, this technology will benefit the world in innumerable ways to provide a return that will utterly dwarf the expenditures of the Mars program. We're talking medical spin-offs, everyday technology, energy production, to name a few. You walk into any hospital and just about any switch you flip leads back to space spin-off technology. New treatments for osteoporosis, artificial limbs, implantable heart monitors, and if it's, if it's cordless, wireless, um, lightweight, strong, miniaturized, and automated, NASA probably had a hand in it. How about everyday technology? Uh, GPS, global positioning system, FSD, full self-driving vehicles. We're talking iPods, iPhones, air scrubbers, uh, solar panels, um, silicon chips, uh, just to name a few. Energy production, we need a transition. There is no shortage of energy. There is a shortage of knowledge on how to produce energy. See, the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. The Stone Age ended because we discovered how to make tools out of metal. We transitioned. Transition is the key to discovering our evolving future. We're growing leaps and bounds in that area because of space spin-off technology. But are we communicating that clearly? I think not. We hang around in our cliques and we spend our time talking to the choir. And if we're going to get the word out, we need a buy-in from the masses. Remember, extreme urgency. As a Mars Society ambassador, we need to communicate clearly. A while back, I was invited to speak to the Disney company. The topic of my talk was enhanced team communication. Now, you would think that an organization as large as Disney would have communication put to bed, but they're bringing people on board all the time. And they felt the topic was so important that they live streamed this. I was speaking in Glendale, California. They live streamed it from Glendale to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Seattle, Washington, Miami, Florida, Disney World, and Paris, France, and Euro Disney. Now, I know you believe you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. What I'm saying is, as a Mars Society ambassador, you have the opportunity to share the mission of the Mars Society in a way that conveys your passion, your enthusiasm, your commitment to the end goal of humans on Mars. And that passion and enthusiasm is catching. People want what you have, but for the most part, they don't know what you have. That's all. So we need to convey it. How do we convey it? Well, Albert Einstein put it very easily. He said, if we can't explain it simply, 
we don't understand it well enough. We're talking about communication here. My friend George Shapiro co-authored this book. He was a professor at the University of Minnesota, a communications professor, and he and his class did a study on communication. And they found out that 7% of what is said is heard through words. Did you hear that? That means that 93% of what you are saying is not heard through words. 38% is heard through the intonation, the feeling, uh, the sensitivity behind the words, and 55% of who we are comes through us through body signals. We are walking, living, breathing television stations, and we are communicating to everyone how we feel at all times. Lee Iacocca is another gentleman I, I learned from. I had the privilege of following him on the platform. This was in Rome, Italy a while back, and uh, this guy was a tough act to follow. He said something I will always remember. He said, there's something that I hate to see on any individual's evaluation, no matter how talented the guy is, and that's the line, he has trouble getting along with other people. He said, to me, that's the kiss of death. You've just destroyed the guy, because that's all we've got around here. No dogs, no apes, just people. And if he can't get along with his peers, what good is he to the company? Yeah, and a successful company won't be successful if its people don't get along. Take it one step further. A Mars mission will not be successful unless the people are going to get along with other people. Ask yourself the question, who would you rather travel with? Someone with a positive attitude or someone with a negative attitude? Remember, Elon Musk put it this way, and I'll read it. It says, Elon Musk, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and want to live. You want to think that the future is going to be better than today, that it's going to be a bright day. And he's right. Otherwise, it's not going to be. Test me on this. Next time you're able to get on an airplane, walk by the flight crew and... Uh, say to the guys, hi guys, how are you doing? And they, they come back and say, geez, are we tired. It doesn't put a good feeling in your mind. You go back and you sit down and the captain gets on the intercom. He says, okay, folks, we're going to try to get this thing off the ground. You want to get out of there because you want to fly with positive people. You want to rub elbows with enthusiasm. Another ingredient in communication is listening. Listen behind what you hear the other person feeling. I call that concerned listening. We've been born with two ears and one mouth. Sometimes we get that confused. The next time you are in a conversation, listen with 100% attention. That's not an easy thing to do. Let me ask you a question. Do you know when you have someone's attention? Of course you do. Do you know when you don't? Yeah. Do you think it works the other way around? Of course it does. All right, we're talking about communication. We're talking about listening. One other ingredient that's very important in communication is observation. We just talked about listening. And I believe that we only hear with our ears, but we listen with our minds. If that's true, I believe we only see with our eyes, but we observe with our senses. I'll make this short. Sometimes we meet someone and there seems to be an instant connection. And sometimes there isn't. We have a sixth sense. We need to follow it more often. Speaking is obviously a large part of communication. Say only that which you want to experience. My philosophy is say what you want, not what you don't want. 
my friend Beverly has osteoporosis. And she continually affirms this. She's, I'm not denying that she has it, but she says, I'm taking prolia shots every six months because of my osteoporosis. I said, Beverly, let's change that a little bit. Why don't you say I'm taking prolia shots to strengthen my bones? She said, gosh, that sounds so much better. I call it word magic. The things you say about the things you do will change your experience. And when you change the things you say about those with whom you associate, your relationship changes. It's pretty much that easy. Einstein has another wonderful quote. He says, Setting an example is not the main means of influencing others. It's the only way. And put a little enthusiasm in your presentation. It's catching. <laughs> in closing, the Mars Society Ambassador Program provides an overview on how to deliver the facts, figures, and timelines to light a spark and entice people in becoming more curious about their future. And it will also enhance your personal and business life with additional communication techniques and skills. If we're going to continue to grow as a civilization, there are certain elements that will allow success to unfold more easily. Learning vicariously is a must. We've relied upon this for years. Your experience is valuable. Sharing it is even more valuable. This is a philosophy by which we can all grow and benefit. As Andrew Bacon once said, knowledge is power. It can pave the way for an existence of an entirely new experience for humanity. Those of you who would like to know more about the Mars Society Ambassador to Program to help spread the word, contact me at james at jamesmelton.com. To support the Ambassador's presentations, we have created an Ambassador Manual, a suggested program outline with video and PowerPoint on Why Mars, Why Now? Of course, this can be adapted for any Mars-related topic. I can't end this program without a personal word of thanks to Dr. Robert Zubrin for scheduling this convention and a gigantic shout-out of thanks for James Burke and his volunteers for pulling all of this together online. That is quite an achievement. Thanks for tuning in. Now it's time for some questions.